Hi guys, how y'all doing? Welcome to Pioneer Day where we're going to learn how to make hardtack. What's hardtack you say? Well, it is a survival biscuit. It is made with flour, water, and salt. Here are all the supplies that you need for this yummy snack. You need several supplies for your hard tack. You need, of course, an oven. You need a cooking sheet. You need a one cup measuring cup, half cup measuring cup, a teaspoon, a couple spoons. I like to have maybe a wooden spoon and a metal spoon, a nice mixing bowl and flour. And my little owl is my salt. We're also and going to water. add water. So make sure you have a good supply of water. Okay, so make sure you have all of your supplies ready to go. We're going to start with the flour and make sure that you measure out two and a half cups of flour. It doesn't have to be really technical. You can even have some lumps and bumps, that's okay. So there's one. Two, two and a half. Okay, next you want to make sure you have one teaspoon of salt. I'm going to have my little owl pour out all the salt. Pour the salt into your bowl and then measure out one cup of water. Okay, now we have everything ready. Stir up your ingredients. It's going to start to get sticky and kind of hard to manage. Hard tack, get it? The more you stir, the harder, get it? Hard tack, it gets. Okay, now we're to a point. You see how it's just kind of loose, clumpy stickiness. Now we're going to take it out and actually knead it with our hands. So you do need a little bit of flour on your counter. Make sure you wash your hands. Now when you knead dough, you just turn it over after you've squeezed it together. You're making just one big clump of dough. Oh, it's really hard. Get it hard tack. <laughs> okay. And it looks pretty ready. Once it's all solid together like this, where you can pick it up and it doesn't fall apart, it is ready to be hard tack. Now you can do this two different ways. You can push it out into a big blob just with your hands like this, or you can actually roll it out with a rolling pin. So it's your decision. I'm just gonna push it out because I feel like in the old days, maybe they didn't always have a rolling pin. And little Cindy Lou had to just Push it all out without the rolling pin. So let's just do that. Nice. I like to make my hard tag pretty thick. So don't make it too thin, okay? Once you have the big blob, you're actually just gonna transfer it over. Be really careful, it's like your little hard tack, baby. Over to your pan. See this nice big blob of hard tack? Now we're going to cut it. Okay. Let's go ahead and set our oven to 375. So it's ready to go. We're gonna cook this for about 25 to 35 minutes. But start first with cutting your hard tack. And I'm just using a regular table knife, nothing fancy. I'm cutting it into little chunks. These are kind of like the very first 
saltine crackers. Have you ever eaten a saltine cracker when you're at home with a stomach ache? So those first saltine crackers, that's Hardtack, the very beginning of saltine crackers. Okay, so we're cutting these up into little squares and they're gonna be all off balance and not perfect. You're gonna take the other end of your knife and you're gonna poke some little like polka dots in these guys. For the bigger pieces, I like to put in at least four and this gives it that hard tack look. Okay, so you can see, just poke in. This is kind of the fun part. Poke in those little hard tack holes. And I think we got it all. Okay, it's ready to go. We'll wait for our oven to be preheated and then we'll start baking. We'll bake for 25 to 35 minutes, okay? And then we'll come back and try some. All right, guys, make sure you're also cleaning up after yourself when your hardtack's baking. It's the perfect time to get everything tidied up in the kitchen and cleaned up. Ooh, it's looking good. The hardest part is the waiting. One. So the timer just went off. Let's see what it looks like. Carefully get it out with your hot pad. And look, guys. This is our hard tack. It's really hot right now. But see how it's literally hard. Isn't that wonderful? They made this for the Oregon Trail. That way it could travel a long, long ways and not go bad. It wouldn't turn stale or anything. So usually they would dip it in either their coffee in the morning or they would dip it in their homemade churned butter, which you guys will have a chance to learn about from Mrs. Kilmeyer. I hope you get a chance to eat this today. It's so good.